Okay, I want to do a series on slightly obscure apps that you didn't know you needed. So, uh, the first cool one that I want to go over is everyone's heard me talk about Image and how amazing that is. It is a photo application that really helps you streamline just like Google Photos, but you're now self hosted. So, this was awesome all by itself. I recently discovered something called Image Frame, which is a standalone service and it's really cool. You can flag family photos. Um, essentially, you make an album all by itself and then you can do really neat things. Like, you can, I've got 300 photos in here, and you know, you see down here, it tells you the the date and the city that that photo was taken in and then over way over on the other side it tells you the current date and time uh, and the city and the the weather forecast it's just a really neat way if you've got uh, a Google TV or an extra Android device that you can display some of these family photos on whatever speed or rotation that you want uh, so it's really random really neat but uh, a really cool application so I'll go over and I'll show you a little bit of a, a video of what it looks like on the the Google TV and it looks absolutely fantastic it's got a, a App Store app that you can just download you put in your put in your address uh, so you know you see my URL and the the port number at the top there you put that in on your own network and it just goes it's flawless and it looks really professional and really well done so I want to walk you through how to install and get all this going yourself. Stay tuned. So the first step here, we are currently, I'm in Electric Eel, um, after doing the, the recent upgrades. Um, and that kind of puts us in a tricky situation. So not everything is available as a standalone app. Um, so the new back end, I'm told, these are all containers and they all launch these Docker containers through various means. And yes, you can go into Discover Apps and you can hit this little kebab icon and you can install via YAML. The only problem with this that I've found is this is kind of a once and done. So if you've got your your YAML file all prepared um, and I'll show you this here you know you've got your you just want to drag and drop that in there that's fine but it, it's it doesn't tell you what you got wrong it doesn't have the the fit and finish and the polish that some of the other examples do so for example, Portainer is the one that I currently use, and that's got a built-in debugger. So it'll show you with different colors of text what you've got right and wrong before you launch it. The other thing that's a little frustrating, and I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but once you put your YAML in here and you launch it, I could not find a way to edit that. So you get it right on the first try, you're golden. So some of the pros of this is... If you get it right on the first try, it'll show up in this list and it'll say running or stopped or whatever you have. So that's kind of cool because you get that nice quick visual. The downside is it's not visual and it's not as good as some of the other options. So I highly recommend find Portainer. If you go discover apps, install Portainer and start from there. So once Portainer is installed, we can launch that. This is my Heimdall dashboard. Uh, so you can launch Portainer. And once you're in there, you'll see your group of uh, automatically entitled local. So if you click on that, you'll see you've got, I've got 28 stacks, 51 containers. The majority of those are the IX systems default containers for each and individual uh, service that we've got running. So if we want to do a new one, all we've got to do is go stacks, add stack, you title it, 
and then you paste in what you need right there. So I'm going to pull up the image frame stack that I've got and just kind of show you that editor. So if you can see here, red is good, black is good, the orange means that it's being commented out. Uh, at first I couldn't figure out because all of these commented out options, they've got a quotation around them. So if we were to do that, it starts off with like a, a light red, but then you see that false is that dark red. No me gusta. But if you were to delete those, it turns black. That's perfectly fine. So I like that this has that built-in debugger function. Um, it's just one step above the basic YAML of TrueNAS. And I had to look it up. YAML stands for YAML 8 Markup Language. So this kind of seems like a markup language, but heck, it's been 25 years since I took C++ and Pascal, so who knows what's going on. The important part is it looks intimidating, but anyone can do this. So a lot of these services will give you a kind of a default YAML to start with, and that's fantastic. So for this one, it goes through name, image frame, service, container name. Awesome. It tells, tells it where the image is. Tells it to restart on failure. Ports. This is going to be the biggest hang up for, I'm assuming, a lot of you. So there's two numbers here. The first number is the port that you would like it to run on on your machine. So I have mine as 30042 because I have image running on 30041. This could be any open port that is available. So you've got that, and then you've got a, a colon, and then you've got the port that it is running on inside the container. So this seemed bass backwards to me when I was first setting these things up, and I struggled a lot. So where you, where you want it on your machine, and then where it's looking for it in the container. I hope that makes sense. So by default, this particular container is looking for and monitoring port 8080 inside that container. Everything's going to end up going to that port that you've defined here as 30042, and everything's all well and good. The API key, and I will change this, so I'm not going to black it out. That's fine. Whatever. The API key is super tricky to find inside image. So when you go to image, you've got to go to your top right user icon. And then you've got to click account settings. Then it's the fourth one down, API keys. So once you click API keys, you can create a new API key, name it, image frame, whatever. It's only going to display on the screen one time. So you've got to copy that and paste it in paste that into your YAML under the API key. Awesome. So we've got that all unblocked. Um, you do have to change your time zone because I believe the default is uh, Amsterdam or something. So just do America forward slash new underscore York if you're in the East Coast, whatever. You can figure that out. That's not too hard. I have mine currently set to an interval of 10 seconds with a transition duration of two seconds. And I turned, I turned the zoom off. It does this kind of funky pulsing zoom thing that, I don't know, Apple does that a bunch on some of their memories and whatnot. I'm just not a fan of it. So you can leave that as true or you can turn it off for false, whatever. Um, skip the next couple, going all the way down to albums. So this is the other one that messed me up a bunch. So again, this is kind of just a test album. I threw a couple hundred pictures in here just so you guys could see. So you see how that's not an album name. It's a random hodgepodge of alphanumeric characters. When you are in image, 
and you are just perusing all your photos, you've got to create an album on the left hand side here. So if you go albums and then create a new one, I created this one called Image Frame. I've got 288 items in here. And when you click on this, you're going to look up here in the in the URL bar. That's what you need to copy. That crazy alphanumeric combo up there. I first started just trying to do Image Frame. What I titled it, that didn't work. So you've literally got to copy and paste that alphanumeric combo in there. Um, down here, show clock true, clock format, hour, hour, colon, minute, minute. Show photo date true, photo date format, day, day, dash, month, 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 with a capital M's, and then dash, year, 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 year. Show people description, couldn't get that one to work even though it's marked as true. Image location format, it defaults as city, comma, state, comma, country. I just truncated that just to city. It's good enough. We don't go anywhere crazy. So usually the city name's enough for us just to jog a memory of where we were and where that picture was. The weather API key. I'm going to blur this out because this one is mine. This was another nightmare to find. Um, so you've got to create an account on openweathermap.com. So, openweathermap.com, create your account, do what you got to do to create a new one, then just go to, once that's created, just close that tab, because it's super frustrating. You got to go to home, if you can type, dot openweathermap.org forward slash API keys. From here, you're going to have a default API key. And again, I'm going to blur mine out. Um, but this API key right here, you can just copy and paste into your YAML and that will get your weather services running. Uh, now to get the weather actually running, you need all of this at least I did so I needed to enable the show weather description put that as true I needed to go to unit system and say Imperial and then the weather latitude and longitude I needed to enter that in so that was another annoying part so if you go to latitude dot to hmm. probably have to spell it right latitude dot to put in your city and state so I'm in Lancaster Pennsylvania and down here in the DD coordinates it's got these numbers, but there's no comma separating the two of them. That's the only thing you need to do. So you need to copy that, put it in here, and just put a comma in between the two. That's it. And then change your language to English, and away you go. So you launch that stack, and immediately you will be... Oh, nope, not there. You'll be ready to rock this image frame. So once you log in, it'll say today's date, today's time, your city, the temperature, clear skies, and it'll say the picture the city where the pictures were taken. So this was taken May 27th, 2024 in Pocono Mountain Lake Estates um, in the Boulder field. I mean, it was just it's cool. It's a it's a fun way to experience memories. So I'm going to do a cut over to what this looks like on the TV, but worst case, this is available as a web application as well on that port that we defined of 30042. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. It's a really fun way to just kind of cycle through some family photos and have some fun with it. And it's totally free and takes 
five minutes to set up. I hope you enjoy. Here's a detailed view of the app from the Google Play Store. It's called Image Frame. Then here's a photo of us camping. Then a photo of us eating some giant $4 pancakes in Latrobe, PA. The place was amazing. Here's some more camping locally. Here is my super pregnant wife and the middle boy. Then the oldest and I at the Kinzua Bridge uh, in somewhere in Bumble Fudge, Pennsylvania on a motorcycle trip. Then some giant pizza from a weird gas station place that was called the pit stop. And yes, I'm in super fat mode there. I'm going to have a keto video for anyone interested coming up soon. Then here's the family on a hike at a state park last year. And lastly, our two youngest children. So to wrap it up, if you've got your own home lab server, you've got image already. There's no reason not to have image frame. Uh, it's a really cool bit of software. Um, we really enjoy it, kind of leave it on the TV when company's over, when Granny and Pappy are over, just to showcase some photos of the family. Um, give it a whirl. If you got any questions, let me know. I hope it helped you in some way or another. Like and subscribe. I'd love to keep doing this. Thank you, guys.